most recent cargo resupply mission was SpaceX's CRS-29, and that was at the end of 2023, delivering more than 6,500 pounds of scientific research, scientific research, crew supplies, and hardware to the orbiting laboratory. And today, Dragon is the only spacecraft currently flying that is capable of returning significant amounts of cargo back down to Earth. The CRS partnership has helped build a strong American commercial space industry that will soon take us to destinations beyond low Earth orbit. Now, in fact, these missions provide critical learnings that will help us develop a human presence on the Moon and Mars, which will require a steady supply of cargo missions to grow and thrive. Again, if you're just now tuning in, we've had an on-time liftoff from Cape Canaveral at 12.07 p.m. Eastern Time. We had, the, we had a good stage separation. Falcon 9's first stage returned back to land and touched down for landing. Now, right now, what you're seeing on your screen is a view from the second stage vehicle looking after our MVAC engine, but the Cygnus spacecraft is still attached. And we are just waiting for Cygnus separation from the second stage in just about a couple minutes from now. Again, getting some awesome views here. And you can see that the vehicle is coasting. On your bottom right hand corner of your screen, you can see the speed as well as the altitude of the vehicle with the payload attached. As a reminder, this is the first SpaceX launch of Cygnus this year. Cygnus refers to the constellation that is visible in the northern night sky. It's the company's tradition to name each Cygnus spacecraft in honor of an individual who has made substantial contributions to human spaceflight. Northrop Grumman named the NG-20 Cygnus spacecraft in remembrance and celebration of the life of NASA astronaut Dr. Patricia Patty Hilliard Robertson. Following separation, Cygnus will have a nearly 40-hour transit to the space station where the station's Canada Arm 2 will grapple Cygnus and the spacecraft will attach to the Unity module's Earth-facing port for cargo unloading by the Expedition 70 crew. If you're just now joining us, you are watching the NG-20 mission carrying the Cygnus spacecraft currently attached to our Falcon 9 second stage, awaiting separation in just about under 30 seconds from now. That view that you see there on your screen is looking forward at the payload. And separation coming up here in a few Cygnus seconds. deploy confirmed. And an incredible view. You can see the Cygnus spacecraft drifting away from Falcon 9's second stage, confirming successful spacecraft separation. The Cygnus spacecraft is now on its way to the International Space Station, expected to arrive in just under 40 hours at 3.20 a.m. Central Time. And that's going to wrap it up for me here in Hawthorne. Be sure to check out SpaceX.com slash launches for a schedule of our upcoming missions. In the meantime, Rob, what's next for Cygnus? Jesse, thanks very much. Great ride uh, into orbit for Cygnus, and I must tell you that the flight controllers here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room were simply mesmerized by that great video of the first stage landing uh, following uh, its job to deliver Cygnus uh, on its way to orbit. Joining me now on the phone here in uh, Mission Control in Houston is Jeff Arend, the manager for the Systems and Integration Office for the International Space Station Program. Jeff, welcome in with us today. Yeah, Rob, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's always good to talk with you. Jeff, uh, a pretty significant day. How significant for the program was today's launch as SpaceX and Northrop Grumman collaborated to send Cygnus on its way to the station? Yeah, I guess I'd start by uh, 
but kind of echoing what you just said, that, that both of our commercial partners, both for cargo and science delivery, as you said, Northrop Grumman and SpaceX, you know, they've each done an amazing job in all aspects of, of the service that they provide ISS. And, um, and as you kind of alluded to, they, they've stepped up their game even more this time around with the, uh, basically a seamless arrangement to launch Cygnus for the first time on a, on a Falcon 9. Um, so, yeah, I can't, can't say enough there. Um, and as you know, the plan going forward is to continue this arrangement for at least a couple more Cygnus flights. Um, and given the overall importance of cargo and science to our mission, you know, the significance of this partnership can't be emphasized enough. It's, it's really hats off to these guys. Jeff, if you would, uh, pretty busy up on the station, 11 crew members, eight nations being represented in the midst of Axiom 3. So over the next 48 hours, outline for us the upcoming activities for the crew on board as they prepare for Cygnus's arrival Thursday. Yeah, happy to. Um, I'm actually going to start. I'm going to start a little bit earlier because um, it's good to remind folks that uh, because this is a, 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 a vehicle that we capture with the SSRMS, there is some, some study time and training time that the onboard crew goes through um, actually in the week leading up to this event. So Laurel and JAWS have been doing some work together, and they actually get some hands-on activity with the actual arm. We actually back away from a grapple fixture and, and then reapproach the grapple fixture similar to what they'll do for a capture. So they get a feel for how the arm actually performs in orbit. Um, they also have to do a little house, clean, house cleaning. There's, um, you know, the port that Cygnus is going to usually has stowage in front of it. So they need to clear the port both for hatch opening and, uh, and entering the Cygnus. Um, and the other thing that that, that serves for is uh, we install a camera an alignment camera that the crew will then check out, and uh, it actually looks out the Node 1 hatch window, and that helps the, the ground team to actually, uh, with their alignment, when they actually berth the uh, Cygnus to Node 1 Nader. And then the final thing is uh, um, tomorrow morning, actually before before the actual um, Cygnus comes to station, they'll They'll set up the robotics workstation that they use. They use that for monitoring Cygnus as, I, as it approaches ISS. Um, they use it to ensure that, that the vehicle stays within the, the expected corridor and remains safe. Um, and then, of course, they perform the capture op operations of Cygnus uh, when it gets to what we call um, its capture point. So, um, yeah, they got, a lot of, they got a lot on their plate, but it starts even before the week before the actual launch of the vehicle. Jeff, thanks very much. We appreciate your time today, as always. Yep, thank you, Rob. Appreciate it. Jeff Aaron, the manager for the Systems and Integration Office for the International Space Station Program. Next up will be the deployment of Cygnus's solar arrays scheduled to begin around an hour and 40 minutes from now. That critical milestone will take about 30 minutes to complete, and once the arrays are deployed, we'll provide an update on the station blog with the latest news. From this point on, Northrop Grumman flight controllers at their Mission Operations Center in Dulles, Virginia, will be monitoring Cygnus's flight to the International Space Station, along with flight controllers here in Houston. They'll work in tandem early Thursday as Cygnus arrives in the neighborhood of the orbital outpost. With that, we're going to wrap up our coverage of the launch of Northrop Grumman's 20th Commercial Resupply Services mission. Cygnus now on course to be captured at about 3.20 a.m. Central Time, 4.20 a.m. Eastern Time, Thursday morning. Live coverage of rendezvous and capture will begin at 1.45 a.m. Central Time, 2.45 a.m. Eastern Time, followed by coverage of Cygnus's installation to the station at 4.45 a.m. Central, 5.45 a.m. Eastern Time. In the meantime, you can learn even more about this mission on the web at nasa.gov slash commercial resupply. So on behalf of my colleague Jesse Anderson of SpaceX and Hawthorne and our colleagues at Northrop Grumman, thank you for joining us today. We'll see you back here early Thursday morning. This is Mission Control Houston.